Hi everybody, it's me, Max, and I hope that you guys are doing well. I recently tried to build a website and I noticed that my HTML and CSS skills are a bit rusty, so I thought I'd make this tutorial series to not only teach myself, but to also give you guys a little bit of a head start in these two programming languages. So let's get right into it. Before we jump into any code, let me just briefly outline to you guys what this video is going to be about. There are three main technologies which you will see pretty much every website use, and these are HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And each of these three languages, which I've just mentioned, covers a bit of a different area. So HTML is used to structure a website, CSS is then used to style the website, and JavaScript is used to then add the functionality to the site. So the question that some of you might have is why are we going to look at HTML and CSS but not JavaScript? The reason for that is pretty simple. We need to learn how to structure websites and style them before we can add any functionality anyway. So we're going to concentrate on these first two building blocks before we move on to a third one in another video. Another way to think about this is that when you are building a house, you have to build the walls first, then you paint the walls, and the electrical garage that you've always wanted, and the fountain in the front yard, that comes at the very end. So in that sense, let us first have a look at how we can build the walls by looking at HTML. So HTML gives us the building blocks which allow us to define how the structure of a website should look like. In addition, you should also be aware of the fact that HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. Now what exactly does that mean? In order to explain this, I think it's easiest if we look at this simple example. Over here on the left hand side, you will see a hyperlink, which should look familiar to you if you have not been living under a rock for the past 10 years. They are usually blue and they're underlined, and in this case, whenever we click on it, we are redirected to Google. Now over on the right hand side, we see the same hyperlink, but in code form. The hypertext, which we were talking about just a moment ago, is this text over here. It is the text which is clickable and redirects us to the URL which is specified. So that is exactly what the hypertext in HTML stands for. It refers to simple text which contains references. And in this case, we've used the URL of Google. So now let's move on to the markup. The markup refers to the annotations which we use in an HTML document that allow us to give the document structure. If you think of a very simple document, you might have a header and you might also have a footer. And in between those, you might have paragraphs, sections, and so on. And in order to distinguish between these components that I've just mentioned, we use tags, which we can also refer to as markup. So that's a bit of an introduction on HTML or how to build the walls. Now let's move on to CSS and try to paint the walls. CSS helps us determine how HTML elements should appear on the page. And similar to HTML, CSS is also an acronym, which stands for Cascading Style Sheet. So why do we talk about cascading in this context? CSS is cascading because the styling rules live in a hierarchy. For example, you could have global rules of styling across the entire website, but you can also have local rules that apply to a specific element. And the cascading property of CSS means that the styling rules that are applied obey this hierarchy. Specifically, rules that are more local overrule rules that are more global. So now we already know that HTML allows us to give our websites some basic structure and CSS allows us to make the websites then look pretty. There are certain requirements that we need to fulfill in order to make use of these technologies. One of these requirements is that we're going to need a web browser and I'm going to be using Google Chrome. In addition to that, we also need some sort of editor to write the code and I'm going to be using an editor called Sublime Text. Now, there are alternatives to both the browser you use and the editor, but I suggest that you use the same ones as I do here so you can follow along. So you probably already have some sort of browser installed because otherwise you couldn't be watching this video. So let me go ahead and show you guys how we can install Sublime Text. First off, we're gonna to go to Google and search for Sublime Text. Then we're going to navigate to their website and on their website, we're going to choose what we want to download. Since I'm using Windows machine, I'm going to download for Windows. 
You'll see the download appear in the bottom left corner and once you click on it, a small window opens asking you where you would like to install Sublime Text. Since I want to leave it in the default directory, I'm just going to press next over here. Then it asks you if you want to add it to the Explorer menu and I'm just going to press yes over here. And then in the final step, you can simply go ahead and press on install. The installation process is short and sweet and after it is done, you can simply press on finish. So now that the installation process is completed, you can go down to the Windows icon on the bottom left hand corner and drag and drop the icon onto your desktop just to make it more easily accessible. So go ahead and double click on the icon to open up Sublime Text. The first thing you want to do is click on View, then Syntax and choose HTML. After we've done that, we can go and save this file. I'm going to click on File, Save As and the name I'm going to give this file is HTML underscore tutorial. Below the name, there's a field which says save as type. And over here, you want to make sure that it says HTML. This is going to ensure that the file that we save is indeed going to be an HTML file, which we can open in the browser. After clicking on save, we're going to go ahead and minimize sublime text. And we're going to open up the folder where we saved this file. Over here, you can already see that the file has a Chrome icon, which means the computer has already detected that this is a HTML file, which is meant to be opened in a browser. If this is not the case for you, then you can always right click on the icon and select open with, and then choose the program with which you want to open this file. So we're gonna go ahead and open this file in our browser. And then next to that, we're gonna have sublime text open. So now if we make a change by adding the word hello to our text document, save it and run it in our browser, you can see that the change also appears in our browser window. By the way, a quick way to save is by pressing Ctrl and S. And if you want to zoom in and out in the browser or the text window, you can always press Ctrl and then scroll with a mouse wheel. Now let's look at HTML in a little bit more detail. Let's say you want to add a comment to your HTML file, which is not executed in the browser. To begin a comment, you write a smaller than sign, an exclamation mark, and two dashes, and you end a comment by two dashes and a greater than sign. And when I refresh the browser, you'll see that this does not appear in the browser. Another type of tag, which comes up pretty often, are the heading tags. To add a heading to your HTML file, you simply have to enclose some text within the H1 tags. In the browser, you can see that the H1 text is pretty large, but you can also use smaller headings. More specifically, you can use anything from H1 to H6, with each one getting gradually smaller. Another tag frequently used to structure a website is the paragraph tag. So if you want to add a paragraph, simply enclose some text within the P tag. Another thing that you might want to add to your website is a hyperlink to another page. So let's go ahead and add the Google hyperlink, which we looked at earlier in this video. If I now go ahead and save this and then refresh the browser, you can see that the Google hyperlink pops up. And as you would expect, when I click on the hyperlink, it redirects me to Google. It's also possible to add images to your HTML file by using the IMG tag. One thing we always need to specify within this tag is the source to the image. So if I go ahead and drag this emoji into the same folder where our HTML file is in, I can then go ahead and specify the source over here which is simply the name of the image. And in addition to that, we can also specify a width and a height of the image. So now if we go to the browser after saving, you'll see that the small image pops up in our browser as well. Moving on, something else that you'll come across really often are nested HTML elements. When we talk about nested HTML elements, all we mean by that is that we can write one HTML element within another. So let's look at an easy example of this. Let's say we have a paragraph and all that the paragraph has inside is two letters, A and B. Now assume that we want to add an image right between these two letters. In order to accomplish this, all we need to do is add the image using the image tags between the two letters A and B. Now you'll see that when we run this in the browser, between the two letters A and B, we have a small image. Let's take a look at another easy example. Over here we have a H5 title, and all it says is click here to visit Google. And we can turn the word here into a hyperlink by simply nesting a hyperlink reference. So now within the browser you can see that we have a heading, and within this heading we have a hyperlink to Google. Now I want to go ahead and talk about attributes. Attributes add a little bit more detail to the tags that we use. In the examples we looked at above, we already came across two attributes, which was the width and the height we specified for the image. But let's have a look at another example, which I'm going to add right here with this paragraph. The attribute over here is called title, and it says I'm a tooltip. 
And what this does is pretty simple. It adds a small box that opens whenever you hover over the paragraph text. And it displays the text that you added, which in our case is, I'm a tooltip. When we talk about attributes, it's really nice and easy to transition over into some CSS because you can actually add CSS to your HTML file by adding an attribute to a tag. I've added another paragraph and the text it displays is a paragraph with CSS. And you'll notice that in the browser, this paragraph appears green. And the reason why it appears green is because over here in the paragraph tag, we've added a style attribute and we've told the color to be green. So when we add the style attribute to our HTML, that is synonymous with adding CSS. Okay, we're going to leave it here for now, but next time we're going to have a look at CSS in a little bit more detail.